This is happening. Wow. This this is a mobile podcast. Are you? <laughs> this is this is recording. This is full quality. Wow. Right now. Is that recording? That's recording. This wow. is recording. This is very impressive. Is this how we're gonna do it? You're gonna hold it for me? If you don't wanna hold a hey, mic. You know what? I normally I'd put on my pilot's headset right now, but uh, if you're gonna hold it, I'm gonna we'll do it like this. We'll do it old school. Yeah. I can't wait till the car drives by us and sees us. And sees a full podcast. Oh, what are your thoughts on Trump? (laughs) (laughs) We are live on the road right now, headed to Phoenix, Arizona. I'm in the car with Tony Hinchcliffe and Joel Joelberg Jimenez. Joel, say what's up. Hello, everybody. I may have rented one size too small of an SUV for this trip. That's the one of the main storylines. If you're wondering, what are they going to talk about in a car? It's very small. Jeremiah brought an entire warehouse of t-shirts with him. 40 t-shirts. 40 t-shirts, <laughs> two cities. Let's see if we can move them. <laughs> I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but, you know, it's an exciting feat. We'll see. We were just talking about, uh, before we started recording, we were talking about the... Uh, Did you say, wait a second, did you say exciting feet? Yeah, an exciting feet. Hey, that reminds me of uh, exciting hands. Exciting... Whoa! Whoa! Thank you! Whoa! It's me, Wacky Tony. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want a mic? <laughs> Come on. Hey, uh, you know, I'm just excited to be here, guys. Go ahead, Jeremy. No, before we started recording the uh, the podcast, we were uh, we we're talking about uh, the punchline is closing. Yes, the punchline is closing. The punchline in San Francisco. I think that's kind of it's a very sad. I was very sad to hear about it. Like you told me, and I was like, I don't know. It's one of those legendary clubs that has so much history. At and anytime we lose something like that, it's just. I don't know. The punchline is so legendary in comedy that it killed itself. Hey. Joel, how you doing back there, dude? Well, you know, I'm just hanging, rock and roll. I'm excited to be here. This is, this is like some of my favorite Pop, pop over to the middle a little bit. Have people... There you go. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh, I mean, nothing beats this. Driving fucking five hours with your friends. Uh, it's probably one of the greatest things in life. Last time, uh, well, the last couple times we've been to Phoenix, we have a tradition of stopping at skate parks along the way, but we did not bring our boards this time. Much to Tony's dismay. Much to Tony's dismay. I, I always picture Tony seeing the videos of you skating and going, these motherfuckers. If Jeremiah breaks his wrist, it's... What would you do, Tony, if I broke something else skateboarding? <laughs> I'd laugh. I think it's dumb what you're doing. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. You're not, uh, you know, you're very wobbly. I, it's you're, You skateboarding is like me sumo wrestling. Like, we're not built for it. You're very wobbly. But what about, uh, you know, I'm around the same height as Tony Hawk, dude. Oh yeah, that's what makes it. It's all about height. They, <laughs> they say that if you're six, what are you, six two? Six three. Wow. Hey, yeah, that explains. Tony always gives me crap, first of all. <laughs> we were just, yeah, we got inside the car and, uh, you yeah. know, I put the seat back because I have long legs, okay? Oh yes, they're so long. It's just <laughs> incredible how much longer they are than everybody else's. Woo! I'm just saying. So he gives me crap for any time uh, because, you know, certain flights, sometimes uh, my knees are riding up against the seat in front of me. And Tony always gives me crap because it's like he thinks that I'm putting on a show or something like that. Yeah. I'm not, pal. I'm this freaking (laughs) tall. Okay. My knees ride up against certain flights and then they're super close to the dash in different vehicles. Wow, uh, you know, those four inches that you have on Joel and I, I mean, totally, yeah, you're not a diva at all. Those four inches, that's that big. For those of you that don't know what the fuck four inches Oh, you're 5'11"? Yeah, I'm 5'10". 
with two pairs of shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> Are those shoes stacked on top of each yeah, other? Yeah, okay, I wear my shoes stacked. Okay, okay. I can't tell because I sit behind a desk on a podcast. Is that a pilot thing? They, they call me shoes? Yeah, they call me Two Shoes Jenkins. <laughs> two Shoes Jenkins, wow. Yeah. Wow, you get a new last name when you wear your Joe, Joe, how tall are you? I'm 5'8". I thought I was 5'7". Then I measured myself the other day and I think I'm 5'8". I'm pretty short. How tall are you? Joel said he's 5'8". 6'3"? I'm 6'3". Wow. 7 inches. Oh my god. The seats on these flights are so small. How you doing I mean, over a, there? A, lot, a lot of them. Why don't you show the? Why don't you show how much the massive amount of space that you have down there? Okay. Well, this is oh. uh, in this specific car. I pulled my seat all the way back. It's not all and, the way back. It's definitely not all. <laughs> and the I've way got back. a lot. Of, and yes, I'm wearing I'm wearing freaking shorts right it's now. It's not all the way back for those of you watching yeah. or listening. This, got is, about this is not all the way back. Space. No. no you got this. You want me to keep pushing back? Because no, I will. No one said we want you to keep pushing back. I'm just correcting you. You said it's all the way back. Push back. And then you showed the viewers. Oh, this is like, officially no, all the way stuff, back right no, now. No, there's stuff behind I, oh, You I just hear the click? Okay. Oh, but I no, think we're confusing that it. as far as the seats actually go back. Right. Uh, compared to being all the way back. You're not all the way back, and that's not as far as the seat goes back. And this, is, have, this is me all the way back. Oh, you're leaning back? No, I'm no. talking about... No, I think there's bags the, behind you. It's as far back as your seat goes right now because there's stuff behind no, you. No, 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 no. Okay, well then you're all the way back. What do you want me to say? You have so much leg room. You can I, extend I, your legs more. There's a lot of room right here. Nobody's arguing that. <laughs> I have uh, friends that are taller than you that complain less about flights and uh, chair space. That sounds like a personal issue to me. One of the funniest things I ever saw was when, <laughs> yeah. we, when we came back from La Jolla, uh, when Jeremiah got out of the car, he looks like a giraffe that was just born. He, he does this like long sort of prance until his legs. Get I'm listening. What do I look like? What do I look like, Joel? I want to hear this. Like a newborn giraffe, or like a horse. You know when like horses are just born and they stand up. You do this thing like you look like the cat burglar when you do it. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stretch, dude. That's true. Get my bones get all tight. Yeah, it looks like it hurts so bad, dude. I like, I'm like, kind of like, have you ever seen a wiener dog stretch? I'm just like that. Yeah, like a, like a, like a, like a woman, like a woman. I think you're the word you're looking for is woman. What does that mean? I said a wiener dog. <laughs> you're comparing a wiener dog to a woman? That oh, well, wiener dogs can't be women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about a female wiener dog. I should hear dog. I should start recording. Oh, you, you weren't recording? No, I wasn't recording. Oh, fuck. Oh, controversial. Yep. Welcome to another episode of the Jeremiah's Legs podcast. It's going to be a long one. <laughs> or a short one. Depends on who you ask. We're just freaking warming up. Now the engine is revved and we're going uh, now. Wow. Yep. Well, was that an accident? Did you forget to press record? I might have forgotten to press record. <laughs> wow. it, might be, it might be a thing that's happened. Have we been recording for... 10 minutes without clear audio? Yep. Wow. It happened. Wow. We got into it with leg room. We got into it about the punchline closing. That's all that you need to know about the recap that happened while we were not recording. But I wanted you to tell your story of uh, a time that you went to the punchline, Tony, in San Francisco and who you got to see do a double act because uh, I would have loved to have been a fly on on the wall in that show. Well, uh, funny you should ask. You know, the great Punchline Comedy Club in San Francisco is closing, and one of my favorite memories there was uh, one night I did a uh, I did a gig with the great Joe Rogan, and we did a big uh, theater. I think we did two shows that night, and uh, he um, called it an early night. And I went out uh, to the punchline because we were staying at the same hotel as Dave Chappelle. And they invited me uh, earlier in the night. We, I was out having a cigarette with Dave. And uh, he invited me to go to the punchline later. He said Chris Rock was in town, that they might be doing something. Sure enough, I went to the punchline, watched Chappelle and Chris Rock uh, be hilarious. Really great. 
you think they're great on their own. They're really great with one another. Chris is a lot more loose, and he's not, you know, he's just hilarious instead of uh, so, so stand-up-y. Much looser, less pressure. I would love to see him in, like, a riffy kind of environment because he's so scripted, like, with his... Yeah, like, as a guest on Kill Tony. Oh, dude. Who are, who are a couple on the bucket list for, for, for Kill Tony who you are hoping to get in the future? That's a good question. Uh, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, Andrew Dice Clay is a big one for me. That's a That would be monumental. Bob Saget. Gilbert Gottfried. Big one. Yeah. Dude, to have to have uh, Saget on the show would be pretty great because he's like comedy store royalty. Yeah. So that would be pretty uh, – and I th- just think that he would – love the format in general yeah what about you jeremiah yeah who are some of the guests that you'd like to have on mine are pretty lofty but you lifted some you you mentioned some lofty ones uh dude if steve martin came on the show yeah i mean that if we're if we're if we're talking like steve martin and jim carrey you're like benjamin franklin (laughs) jesus christ almighty (laughs) yeah i mean you know you know you you never know fuckers ready for the second (laughs) coming who likes surprises uh oh we have a new regular on the show (laughs) dexter st jock just burst into flames Dude, this is so this is so cool that we're able to do this freaking mobile in the car. There's camera right here, full stereo quality. Wow. This reminds me of a of a podcast I did in a car about nine years ago. The guy named Ari Shafir. Did you? Yep. Me, Matt Edgar, and him. Uh, I believe it was just before the first ever shroom fest maybe it was eight years ago yeah eight years ago i think on the way to shroom fest in la jolla or something like that and did ari have mics plugged in or did he was he just kind of going back and forth with the zoom uh no we had microphones uh with the zoom no camera though the video is a whole new element this is like uh it's like if seinfeld and uh a bad podcast had a baby Comedians in cars uh, getting podcasted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mentioned it's uh, nine in the morning. Here. It's nine in the morning right now. I like, and we're looking at mountains right now as we drive by. It actually looks like. Yeah, it's awesome. It's pretty amazing, actually. I might actually turn it around yeah, for a second. Like higher than usual. Look at this is this is our view right now from the road. If you're listening on audio, uh, I'll paint the picture for you. Billowy clouds uh, over uh, over mountain range on our way to uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, we have we have red band in the back <laughs> on sound effects. Brown band? Oh my goodness! In my country, they are the brown. The Browns are banned. That Joel, what yeah. what's been? What's what's been going on with you since you uh, started Kill Tony? Because um, life changing. It's yeah. life changing. Yeah, because, for real. Because you worked at a skate park for years, and uh, and now, like you said, you got recognized at Disneyland. Yeah, just it's going there. Pretty the other day. nuts, dude. I, I was thinking about it. Uh, I think about it all the time because it freaks you out if you think too much about like if you zigged when you should have zagged. Like, you know, just the sort of relationships you make in life and who you end up uh, making friends with and kind of hanging out with. Like, um, I think about just going up to Pat the first time I met him and how all of that unfolded to me being here on the road. It's, um, it's changed everything, dude. And and to be... Well, what's crazy to me is, like, like out of all the accolades of, uh, you know, that, that the show has brought you through comedy... What's kind of crazy to me is like for people, I mean, and I, I hope people understand how big of a deal it is for you to actually be a Ludwig artist because that is you to be like an official artist of like a major drum company. That's not an easy thing to do at all. And to, to, to that happened through Kill Tony and you like showing your chops on the show and everything. So I think that's, I don't know. It's, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. It's weird to think about. I, uh, but I like, what are back. you, what are your parents like 
think whenever like all this stuff is going on because they're freaking out man are they freaking out i'll say a couple things my mom i mean the fact that i'm on the same roster as ringo star is like a big deal for my mom because she loved the beatles yeah she loves the beatles and um yeah, it's weird. Also, th- this is sappy, but like uh, my so my mom's uh, she's in a wheelchair. It's hard for her to get around. And one time she said that um, she feels like she gets to experience the world through me wow. because we get to travel and stuff. So that meant a lot to me. And um, I don't know. It's really cool. Me and me and you get magnets for our moms all the time. And the other day, my mom said she hopes she has to buy a bigger fridge. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. So, you know, life has completely changed. I mean, I remember sitting at the skate park, like, hating everything, dude. It was f- awful. Yeah. I mean, it was fine, but I just was, I felt trapped there. And I still feel trapped in certain areas, but I have all this to look forward to. And the show's growing, so I really would like to be doing this more often. Can I just say that how much I love your parents? Like, they're such good people. Oh, they're going to love that. I mean, they just are. Like, I, I feel like, you know, I don't have uh, uh, any family out here uh, in, you know, direct family. You know, I have my wife's family yeah. now that is... <laughs> <laughs> my wife always corrects me. She's like, you know, they're your family too. I'm like, yeah, no, 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 no. I know, I know. But it's like the way, I don't know, the way you, re- do you get it, Tony? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I absolutely get it. Yeah, Joel, yeah, you, you know, family, family. Yeah. And I can tell you're just trying to get more free salsa out of his mom. Peach cobbler. First of all, his mom is an amazing cook. She made me peach cobbler for my my birthday, was it? Or yeah, was it Tony t- had some, I think. Dude, it was, it was delicious. I mean, peach cobbler is the fucking, that's the fucking fastball of American desserts, if you ask me. And God damn it, if she didn't nail it. I remember exactly where I was, right between the uh, the big cooler and the bar. and. That's right. In a big foil pan, and there was there was me having a slice, and Jeremiah was licking the pan, and it just seems like yesterday. Yeah, uh, the the salsa that she made, Joel, um, that you couldn't handle was uh, okay. really good. All right. um, My mom started this thing with Jeremiah where she told him I can't take hot chili. She's <laughs> she she knows I can't. She was just being funny, and now he. He Joel can't it. handle his spice, dude. It's kind of sad. Whatever, like, dude. He, he's, a, he's a Mexican guy. Uh, we're going to go Mexican fucking guy. blow for blow, dude. We, we need to get on hot you ones. You want to do a hot ones? You want to go head to head? We could do our own. or We'll, we could, do, we'll do a DIY hot one. See yeah. how, how much heat we can freaking okay. handle, Joel I'm Berg. Fucking, I'm in it, dude. Dude, watch out. Momberg and I are coming for That's you, right. dude. Uh, but, and also, I played a, I played a clip. Momberg. Momberg. Um, also, my dad thinks he's a taco chef now because you mentioned that the tacos he made you were some of the best you've had in your life. Dude, they're phenomenal. Just a little fun fact, uh, since this is a on-the-road podcast, I should mention that right now we're driving through the windmill section of the 10 freeway, which you would recognize from hit video games like Grand Theft Auto and uh, you know it's sort of like an interesting part you always remember this part of the drive whether you're going to Vegas or Joshua Tree or Phoenix or really anywhere east of LA it's how you know you're like two hours out sort of see that maybe through the uh, there's a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a overcast uh, today we're going through a little bit of weather and, uh, but we got some windmills up ahead if you look out your front windows. What, what do those power, the city around here? Um, I think they, uh, yeah, I think they hold on to it. I think they conserve it, um, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure at all whatsoever, actually. I have no answer whatsoever. But, yeah, wow. I, think, I think they hold on to it in, like, an a, a energy chamber. Jeez. It's very weird. But then again, I have no clue. Yeah, that that sound <laughs> that sounded <laughs> like you completely made that up. An energy chamber? <laughs> what are you talking about? So the yeah, you know, just like a uh, little uh, yeah, uh, an energy chamber, and uh, I think it actually holds the city together. And if, and and if so, uh, if one windmill is out of alignment, actually, then oh, uh, you got you doing a little hand thing there. Little, Drive in the car. <laughs> little, I, oh, oh, it's, yep, 
<laughs> that looks so ridiculous on camera. <laughs> Tony's been obsessed with these little hands. Uh, that Joel, you got him like a pack of the little hands, right? Yeah, on Amazon. So a fan, uh, what a fan gave you one in in Philly, yep. and we go to the airport at like four a.m. Uh, my, by the way, my favorite Tony is like slap happy three thirty a.m. on the way to the airport, Tony, because he just loses his mind a little bit. And uh, he had the hand and was just rocking it in the airport, and it was the funniest thing. And then he you dropped it. You guys riffed for so long with the yeah. with the baby hands. Nothing in this world makes me laugh harder than uh, strangers walking by me at the airport while I'm sitting down, and they're right before we board, and people just walking by because they all look down because they don't want to roll their bags over your feet so everybody sort of naturally is looking down if they're about to grab a seat before boarding the actual plane and uh, I was just tapping my legs and my favorite thing was to look at their eyes because they don't look at you in your eyes they're looking down so you get to see them see the hand and then sort of like react they have like this initial like oh god what an ugly hand <laughs> like thing that they do well, you did this thing to one of the TSA agents that they <laughs> died laughing. It was yeah. two black guys who were taking and checking IDs and stuff like that. And Tony, with a straight face, and then he smiles right whenever he hands them his ID with his little hand. He had the ID, like, stuck in there. So he's like, oh, hello. <laughs> and he just, like, handed his ID up to the TSA. And and they're trying not to, to break. And then they finally go... Man, he got a little hand, man. <laughs> man, look at this guy's hand, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, dude, it was so funny. And then he said to the other guy, he goes, he's had this, he's had this hand out the whole time, this little hand, little ass hand. <laughs> That's my rap name is Little Ass Hand. <laughs> Lil Ass Hand. Yeah, this is, uh, this is actually, um, the hand feels great if you put it in your butt. <laughs> wow. What a sound bite for the show. <laughs> the hand feels great if you put it in the butt. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Dude, got those sound effects going, Joel. Okay. It is bumping. Actually, this is the, uh, if you can see it a little bit better now, probably. This is the windmill section that Tony was talking about. Very aggressive windmills. Very aggressive. And there's actually, if you didn't know, there's an energy chamber <laughs> underneath. <laughs> Oh man, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It actually uh, controls the frontillion format of the exterior. The frontillion. There's actually a reptilian race that lives underneath the windmills. If you look closely to your right, you'll see uh, that the sewer people are actually powering the city of Reno and Las Vegas right now. <laughs> Palm Springs. This is wow. just uh, the frontillions have escaped from the energy chamber. <laughs> wow, from Palm Springs to mom things. Dude. Oh my goodness. Uh, is Brody's mom from Palm Springs? Yep. Yep. Wow. And Daisy, the dog. Wow. Uh, and the dog. Man. Daisy the dog. That's crazy. This is quite the drive to make, actually. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I just consider myself a man of the people. I like to uh, make sure that we're safe. So uh, I just want to be, uh, you know, helping everybody out driving. I have a no, feeling. I was talking about Brody, but. <laughs> 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 but I mean, I appreciate you driving us to, to Phoenix as well. I actually would much rather do this than go to the airport and, and deal with that. To be in a car full of friends is actually way more fun. And. You can't do this on a plane. You can't bust out a freaking podcast on a plane. Not happening. Yeah, your legs don't fit, you know? Yeah, you can't do that with your legs cramped up. There's literally not enough space for my legs. I'm probably sunburning right now. I have my knees out. I'm that white. Okay, can we get fan art of Jeremiah with ridiculously long legs? Just like, <laughs> just like towering just over like the windmills, towering. like spinning it with your. And then head. you, you and Tony are just like these tiny images, like right next to me. Like I'm like Godzilla, but with long legs. Like, ah. <laughs> oh man! Did you have anything in high school that people made fun of you for, Tony? Like specifically, because you were like you're on the wrestling team. It seemed like you were pretty popular for the most part. Yeah, not in high school, but in uh, in kindergarten, everybody called me Big Head. 
I, everybody just called you big head and yeah, I had the same size head that I have now exactly the same size when I was in kindergarten and first wow. grade and second grade but I hadn't grown into it at all yet I was like literally I was like you know three foot eleven uh um three eleven yeah, it was 311. Come on, Regina. You got to come on, Regina. What's up, dude? I'm freaking here for kindergarten, dude. <laughs> Shut up, big head. <laughs> so I had this giant head, so everybody called me big head. And I, and I give it credit. My big head is definitely one of the reasons why I ended up being uh, uh, very uh, quick on my feet with making fun of people and whatnot because I got made fun of a lot by all the older classes, especially when I was in kindergarten. And uh, everybody just called me Big Head. Like, nobody called me Tony that entire year. Oh, shit, Yeah, dude. exactly. <laughs> so they sort of created a monster there. And uh, wow. yeah, that's in kindergarten. Those are such formative years of your, uh, of your life. Yeah. Like, And it was like fourth graders doing it, too. It's like, hey, what up, Big Head? Like, on the wow. bus and shit. Like, I wouldn't even... Before school. I'd be down on my luck before school even started. Because I was Big Head on the bus the way to school so you know it's one of those things to where I promised myself that summer leading into it that uh, that I wasn't gonna let or the summer leading into first grade I wasn't gonna let people fucking get away with calling me big head for free you call me big head you're getting one back and so it began What is that noise? It was a boing sound yeah. effect, you know, but sometimes Properly you miss. Timed. No, yeah, sometimes people on sound effects boards miss. We've seen that once or twice. Uh, I thought I'd continue the tradition. <laughs> um, they, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got made fun of for my nose. Yeah? Yeah. Which is, yeah. These I've never I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I say it. I'm trying to relate. I've, I've here. never I've never gotten that before. I had these two girls that used to walk by me on the stairs and they would act like they were choking, like I was stealing all their air. Oh <laughs> they would go. They would go. <gasps> oh wow! You have, yeah. In, you have a big nose in Latino culture. I guess so. I guess I kind of do. Like it's round. I guess it's the shape of it. That's a bit of a, I guess, a, a bulbous. Yeah, it's not like if thing. I do the backstroke, people don't think a shark is coming. I mean, I, yeah, I have that problem. Yeah. Uh, uh, I just play the Jaws theme on a cell phone anytime I'm near a pool. Uh, uh, I can't get it up. I can't do it quick enough, or I'd have the sound effect ready. But never mind. The moment has passed. Uh, uh, did your older brother go to the same school as you, Tony? No. No, I went to a different school as all my uh, my siblings. They're all much older than me. It was a different time. They got to go to the public school in Youngstown because it wasn't that dangerous at the time. But by the time I was uh, I was born, it was uh, it was very dangerous. So what like dangerous to the point where you, were you not allowed to to walk to school? You had to like well, yeah, like do you know what I mean? Like yeah. like like your mom would be afraid for you to like go anywhere walk anywhere close in the vicinity or anything like that here will you take the wheel for a second yeah put an eye drops drive-bys are dangerous when you have a big head big head big target oh. we're podcasting putting in eye drops and steering cars all at the same time uh yeah the neighborhood was so bad that uh I mean, you could walk to school, but you just wouldn't. Not where I was, not where I live. No, I was in the worst part of the absolute worst neighborhood in Youngstown. Like I've seen, I saw people die at such a young age. It's really weird looking back at it, and uh, it was just a normal thing. Murders, and uh, I still think about it. We were averaging a murder a day at one point. Jesus, a murder a, a day. day? Yep. Is murder. So you're just seeing things like I remember being a kid and seeing on uh, on the news, like in the uh, the Clinton era, uh, when gas was in Kansas, it was it got down to like sixty cents or seventy oh cents a gallon. Uh, and I, I'll never forget. There's like this one uh, guy uh, who's on the news, like some random local guy is like, if the if the the, the gas is so cheap, why not sell it for free? <laughs> <laughs> like it made Wait, why'd no you do sense. that accent? What was that accent? That, he was some kind of like Middle Eastern guy or something. Oh, like it's that. not that it was Latino. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I why don't they sell don't it for free? I don't want to sell it for free. I don't know. I'm Middle Eastern. I'm I like Middle. I'm like <laughs> Middle East Eastern, like I'm Eastern. A, I'm Salvador, fool. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm a Middle Eastern. I'll take two burritos, please. 
Yeah, man, I was responsible I got, for 9-11. I got randomly selected at the airport, <laughs> fool. I don't know what happened, man. It was freaking My dad's wild. My name is Bin Laden, fool. What's up, babe? Eh? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Going to school is hard enough when you're a kid, and then having to walk through like a crazy place like that is like just extra shit you don't need. Well, the bus driver was also crazy. I mean, the whole thing was just crazy. And the thing to remember is that it wasn't just the murder capital of America when I was growing up there. It was also uh, it was the murder capital per capita. So I remember at one point the ratio broke down to one out of every 100 people in Youngstown at that time were going to be murdered. Oh my God, dude. That was the statistic it, it, when it got at, at one of its worst points. That was the average. The one out of every 100 people is a murder and will get murdered. Oh my so God. think about that one. So you're just looking at your classmates <laughs> like, like, who's it going to be? Yeah. And then I ended up being the biggest killer out of all of them. I'm number one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So one, so one of them will be a murderer. One of them will be a will get murdered. Do you think any of the murderers ever got murdered? <laughs> Cancel each other out, dude. Did the murderers incept Whoa. themselves, dude. And now they live underneath the windmills out in the middle of this <laughs> desert, right. dude. Be Nevada together. They're desert people now, man. Frick, dude. <laughs> That's a weird one too. Like, remember when we stopped in Coachella, Jeremiah, to skate? Like that one skate park. Yeah. There, there are just these weird, like, pockets of town that it just seems like they're just sun baked, sort of. I always wonder, like, when we stop in those middle of nowhere kind of towns, like on the way to the bigger cities, I always wonder, like, what are those? Like, what what is life like f- for that person? Like Monday through Friday. Yeah. Like how, I don't know that that's it's it's always interesting to me like 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 truly when you're out in the middle of nowhere because I I talked to somebody who was like yeah we just got internet in our town ta- like last year I was like last year how does that even happen Dude. like whenever you're that far out you know man like she she this girl that came down from uh uh somewhere like way out like up like. In like the mount, like a mountain kind of town. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> Is there internet? <laughs> <laughs> Dial up. Montana. Montana has bad internet. Is that where she was from? Montana. That's my guess. <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't remember. Dang, that's so weird, man. Did you? Do you? <laughs> dude, speaking of, of that noise that you just played, that just took me back. Did you ever? Did you ever pop in those AOL CDs or those Net Zero CDs for for internet like minute subscriptions? I'll I'll one up you. Not only did I do that, this is something I almost have never talked about before. I wanted a computer really bad for Christmas one year. Like, all my friends had more money than us and everything, and they all had computers way ahead of time. I always got everything, like, three or four years after it came out, right? Like, I got Nintendo when everybody was getting Sega. I got Sega when everybody was getting Super Nintendo, whatever. Anyway, so I asked my mom for a computer, and for Christmas, there's a big box next to the tree. The motherfucker was heavy. Right, and I'm opening it up, and I open this thing, and it is a word processor. <laughs> is a giant monitor and a keyboard, and the keyboard has the printer connected to it. It's basically a typewriter with a fucking monitor, and that sucked so bad. When I realized, oh, I can't do anything on this except for fucking type. This is garbage, mom. You really fucked up on that one. Damn, dude. So that was probably the one of the worst gifts you ever got. What well, was one of the best gifts you ever got from your mom for Christmas? Uh, well, the best gift I ever got for Christmas. Um, for Christmas. Like I got a, I I remember getting uh, a Nintendo 64 one year, and that was like one of the most epic. Yeah, I got that too with years, Wave Race. Dude. Wave Runner? Yeah, Wave yeah, it came, wa- Wave Race it came with the or Wave Race. With it, yeah. Okay. Uh and I think we we got Goldeneye shortly after that and yeah. that was like a life-changing game. That literally took over multiple summers of my life like with different friends and stuff. <laughs> I just got a feed of Tony um at home after that uh Christmas right now. Dude, I, I just so did you end up using that word pro 
<laughs> so de dear mom, I'm not a fan of the gift that you left. How dare you? I wanted a full computer or maybe a video game system, but instead, no. You just gave me a word processor. I'm disgusted, mother. <laughs> Send. <laughs> 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 so oh, stupid. Fuck. Did you like? Did did? Now, were you the kind of kid who was direct with your mom, and you're like, "This sucks." <laughs> yes, very much so. Absolutely. I let her know immediately, and then she'd start crying. Uh, uh, she was a little bit more emotional back then. I just try my best. <laughs> you know, your father doesn't help, and uh, ugh, I'm a single mother. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Settle down. I'm going to end up being one of the top young rising comedians in the world one day. Oh, yeah. What are you playing now? What is it? <laughs> oh, we have uh, Tony's mom on the line. Uh, she's actually still crying from the word processor. Crying woman? <laughs> yeah, Joel found a crying woman somehow. Well, Mrs. Hinchcliffe. Uh, please don't get so upset. We, oh, the Mrs. Hinchcliffe. It's, he he didn't mean to say how he felt after all these. Okay, uh, you, you're you're hysterical. It's hard to even reason with you. Okay, he's gonna make an apology. Tony, do you have anything to say? Look, you did your best. You always say that you did your best. Well, you did your best. Oh, settle down. Get it together. You're 72 years old, lady. Get it together! You call yourself a goddamn hinge clip? Oh, oh, that hurt? That hurt? Oh, we lost her. Oh, we lost her. I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, man. Have, feel, uh, feel free to um, uh, keep calling in with those sound effects, Joel. This right. is <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, this, there's a Motel 6 for $59.99 if we want to stop there, guys. Whoa, Where is this? What, what town is this that we're in? This is uh, still, uh, I would say we are still on the outskirts of... Uh, still on the outskirts of... Palm Springs. Still on the outskirts like of Palm an Springs. an hour away from Albert Tacos. Yeah, probably. Probably not that far. Uh, Indio. 22 minutes, Indi maybe. Indio. It's uh, basically Coachella, right? Yeah. Okay. We've done the all done the road a lot together, separately. What's yeah. the worst hotel room you've ever stayed in? <clears throat> Uh, let me think about this. You say yours. Okay. Uh, one of mine was for the Comedy Jam. We were doing uh, a festival up there. I think we were doing Outside Lands or whatever. <laughs> and uh, our buddy Joel Rakowski, uh, who's a guitarist uh, uh, in the band and also lead guitarist for Reagan and Watkins album that's coming out, uh, he books, he's notorious for, for bargain hunting and finding crazy deals but every once in a while we'll show up to an airbnb or something and we're like this is so shady so we uh we are up in san francisco and uh we are way outside of the city because anything inside the city if you know anything about san francisco is crazy expensive and we get in there and it's it's four of us crammed in to two little double beds so I'm sleeping next to Josh Adam Myers and our, the drummer is sleeping next to the guitarist all in this little room. There's blood stains on the carpet. The paneling is coming up and I was terrified that there was bed bugs like everywhere and outside people are hauling TVs and stuff into the back of, the, of their SUVs. I don't know if it's from the hotel or if they literally just bring their own TVs to this joint but it was super shady and that was definitely one of the worst like it just everything was dirty inside the hotel room is like even before like we we slept the night like to the point where i slept on top of the covers i didn't even want to get underneath the covers because it grossed me out so much that's pretty powerful i uh i don't work with um i don't work with that many um thrifty people uh, I don't. I haven't had to do that type of grind on in on when it comes to the road. I've always been sort of lucky. It's either been local gigs with pals or uh, or um, or uh, pretty 
good. Like either I take care of it or I'm with Joe Rogan or Jeff Ross, you know, back in the day or whatever. So those are always nice. The, really, the first one that comes to my mind, I'll tell you two stories. The first one that comes to my mind, because the real question is worst hotel, I'll say Manchester, England, food poisoning based on principle. Uh, it was one of the rare occurrences to where my manager's assistant accidentally booked on the wrong date. We were sick as dogs, vomiting everywhere, butts leaking shit, like everything was horrible. And uh, we had to wait like I, what, what felt like days, but was probably only really about 25 minutes. In a yeah, I think that it was only probably about 20, 25. I was actually, we actually got lucky and they actually were able to finagle some rooms because they could tell that we were exhausted. Yeah, I think they could tell, especially since I told them that, uh, that, that they need to get their shit together. But I will say this, is that one night I slept in the top bunk of a children's uh, bunk bed in Texas. Um, it was me, um, my good friend Matt Edgar, who uh, started with me 12 years ago. By the way, Tuesday was my 12-year anniversary as a stand-up comedian. Congratulations, uh, dude. That's freaking yeah, amazing. Dude. 12 years. 12-year awesome. anniversary of showing up at the comedy store May 7th, 2007, uh, signing up for an open mic, getting up, and falling in love. Anyway, um, wow. so I started with Matt Edgar. And uh, him and I were opening for our friend in Texas, who's a big guy, and uh, and this is one of the, my first gigs opening and whatever and all that, and, and we were supposed to be staying um, somewhere else, I do believe, but we went to a Whataburger, and we, uh, him and I were having like a play argument, we were drunk and laughing about something, and at some point, uh, a cop comes up to us, and he goes, uh, you two need to get out of here. We don't, we don't want you here. And we're like, what? At Whataburger? Like I had just ordered. It was my first time. It was our first time ever at a Whataburger. We were so excited to be there. And he goes, yeah, you guys got to get out. I'm like, uh, can we eat? He's like, you need to get out now, or else I'm gonna arrest both of you. So we go, out, we go outside, and we tell our buddy uh, Steve Trevino. You know, he's a bigger guy, the real Texan. He's the guy from Texas. He's from that city. We're like, yeah, they just kicked us out. He's like, why'd they kick you out? And we're like, uh, we don't, we're not sure at all. He just said that he doesn't want us there to leave or else he's going to arrest us. And Trevino's like, oh, hell no. And he goes up to the cop and he's like, hey, dude, why'd you kick my buddies out? These are my friends from California. They're, you know, they're here for their first ever Whataburger experience. And the cop's like, Oh, you're with those guys? Well, then you need to get out of here, too. He's like, what? This is the city that I live in. I'm friends with the mayor. Like, I mean, what are you What are you talking about? Why are you kicking us out of Whataburger? He's like, say one more word, I'm going to arrest you. Jeez. He's like, one more word, motherfucker. And uh, so Steve got arrested. Um, went in the parking lot while getting arrested. He actually calls. He turns out he is friends with the mayor of that city. Um... And, uh, and, um, and, uh, we end up staying at the mayor's house. The mayor comes and picks us up. Steve had to go to the, like the drunk tank and, uh, Matt was on the bottom bunk and I was on the top bunk and, um, there was a scary dog outside. At one point I remember peeing out of the window cause I was afraid of the dog. So I just peed out of the bedroom window. Little fun fact for you. And, um, and yeah, uh, later that night, in the middle of the night, Trevino came in like, hey, look at these little babies sleeping in bunk beds. And like, we weren't even asleep. We were just all cracking up. And then... It's the dog. Oh, yes. All right, we okay, got sorry. it. There you go. And, uh, and then the next day, we're traveling to the next city on the Texas tour. And uh, Steve gets a phone call from his from another buddy, the chief of police of that city. And he goes, uh, yeah, Steve, everything okay? And Steve's like, yeah, I'm okay. I mean, I just spent a few hours in the drunk tank. What did that guy say? What was his problem? And uh, the chief of police goes, well, you know, he said that uh, he said that there were a couple faggots <laughs> fighting in a Whataburger. And, uh, you know, Steve, you know, we're not really that far ahead. You're used to that California stuff out there. And me and Matt Edgar were in the car, and it's on speakerphone, and we're dying of laughter and the chief of police didn't know we're on speaker so steve's like shut up shut up you know what i mean it's one of those funny moments where you get called a faggot in texas
Wow. So they they literally just did not even want you in the vicinity because he genuinely just was like, oh, there's a couple gay guys. We don't want them in our town. Yeah, We're going to get them out of here. This is eight or nine years ago. We're wearing skinny jeans before that was just the size of jeans, before people were wearing clothes that fit. You know. Dude, I wear I I look at some of uh, my pictures and stuff from like the '90s, the way like you know what was popular, and, and my mom also liked baggy uh, that look. And dude, there is so much pant leg yeah. around. It's it's crazy because now everything I I wear is like eh, pretty fitted or what would be considered I guess skinny jeans or or whatever. It's just like weird. Everything's so loose. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Everything was baggy back in the day. That was like the thing. Gap baggy jeans and like all that shit. Joel, do you ever sag? Yeah, for sure. All the time. I still kind of do just, you know, out of respect for the 90s. Um, you sat, you, are you one of those sag skinny jean per- people? No, no, no. I, I, I the little Wayne? I keep it on the waist, but I do sometimes I pull my boxer waistband just just a little bit outside. So just, just to let them know. Just to let them know what's up. Um, you stunting on them. Yeah, I didn't. I've I've been pretty lucky with hotels too. Be I've been kind of like spoiled on these tours and stuff. But I remember Manchester being rough because you were sick, and then Oof. the room was just a little bit like was kind of like very British. Like it sounds weird, but like what you would think like some fucking British hotel. Is it room weird would be to like. say that it smelled like old school Britain? Yeah, yeah. Is that weird? It's like what the TV shows. I've never like even been there, like. but like there's this regal old smell. This almost like visiting a grandmother's house yeah. mixed with the sterility of a hotel. Like, you're like, but uh, it was very weird. That was like, yeah. One, one r- hotel room that was rough that, that we had to do last minute <laughs> was on the, the what, what was it part? Of, I can't remember if it was part of the Monster Energy Drink Tour or not. The Port Authority, uh, not Port Authority. Was it Port Authority? No, the the hotel, like, it was a Times Square hotel. And that was one that was interesting because so, you, like, they have, they turn and burn people constantly there. And that was one room that I was like, oh, this is, like, a lot of people. Like, there's a new person in this. Like, uh, do you know which one I'm talking about? Is a last minute one? Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, that was a busy, uh, busy hotel. But those turn and burn ones also are... You know, those, it, it just depends on the place and the literally the cleaning crew because sometimes those can be some of the cleaner ones. Yeah, I think that it was just, I, I think, like, a lot of, like, since it was, like, the Times Square area and, like, New it's freaking New York City. So it's, like, it's one of those things where it's, like, you, you're going to get something that, like, like, they don't even have, they're turning so many people that they're, like, ah, if it's not perfect, it's not perfect. Yeah, but I've been... We've been pretty lucky, like, uh, on the road, like, like you said, like to have pretty good stuff, but honestly, (laughs) it's anytime I've traveled, like with, uh, there's been a handful of like when you're traveling with a, a real big group, like the comedy jam where it's like, oh, we're, this is like a band. Like we're, we're going to be roughing it for a little bit. You know what was sweet was um, when we were in Dallas that time and we had like a whole floor almost in an Airbnb. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, that was nice. We were right above the burrito place and I look back and I'm like, damn, that was like posh, man. Yeah, that was that was uh, on uh, when we did that. The Dallas, uh, Fort Worth, Houston, Austin run. I don't remember. Tell me about it. I don't think we did Fort Worth that time. I think it was the Dallas Hyenas. Um, I don't think you were in the Airbnb with us. It was me, Pat, and Jeremiah. And it was, uh, yeah, it was awesome. It was a cool, like, apartment thing. There was, like, all these rooms and, uh, yeah, it It was was nice, though. 9.38 a.m. in the morning going through the desert. Yes. Sun's coming out. It's been out the whole time. <laughs> An hour and ten away from Albert Tacos. Oh, yeah. Rick Kosick, uh Are we? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, keep an eye on that. 10.49, it says we shall be arriving. Ooh, that's good. We stop at this uh, taco place in Blythe. 
Uh, it's like the halfway point usually to uh, Phoenix. Joel and I usually stop at this place that Rick Kosick referred us to. And uh, yeah. Jeremiah gets the chips stop. with cheese on them. It's very good. I load up. You got to do Mexican Coke, by the way. Mexican Coke is a, is a deal breaker for me whenever it comes to to good Mexican food like to put it over the top yeah you gotta have you gotta have that Mexican Coke man I grew up drinking this stuff uh, it's a soda but it's called Sangria it's made by this uh, company called Sonorial Sonorial did you do that? <clears throat> the seat warmer was on and I, I've been, I, th- I thought I was having a, like a panic attack I thought I had a hot ass did you, did you turn the seat warmer on? yeah Red Band does this thing when I drive with him long distance where he turns the seat warmer on and then I'll start sweating uncontrollably and I'm like, am I having a stroke? And then I look down and the seat warmer's on and literally the seat warmer's been on for a while and I thought that it was the sun, but it was, uh, nope, just a seat warmer. Wow, that Red Band. I just had a, a little panic attack. Wow, right now? Yeah. Oh man, my heart goes out to you. I know what that's like. Yeah, that's what Jeremiah thinks a panic attack is. Is when you think your your butt's, butt's warm for a second. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was when I go to the emergency room. <laughs> Joel, yeah, you feel comfortable talking about that? Sure, I don't care. Joel had to before one of the legs of one. What, what, what part of the tour was that? Uh, it's happened three times to me this year. It's happened three times this yeah. year? Where you go to the hospital? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta, you can't do that, dude. Joel's been having uh, panic attacks before. Is it always right before we leave town on a stretch of... No, I've shows? had it since, like, the fourth grade. It's like... Oh, okay. It's just, like, a thing. I think it's, like, some sort of chemical thing, right? Yeah, you know, I just gotta figure... I gotta... Let me ask you this. Yeah. Did your, did your mom have these? Does your mom know about them? Uh, no, my mom's never... She's never really had them. Like, I... Like I have Like when I was a kid It took him a while To figure out What was happening to me I used to just like Get sick a lot I had like My stomach would be messed up And then uh I remember having My first one in church Like I like I went to Catholic school and Did so they I think had you a, had a demon Inside of you? I don't know Probably No they weren't You know Catholics don't really do that It's more <laughs> Christian Stuff Um but yeah, then I had them for a long time. Then in high school, I just, I guess I like just smoked a bunch of weed and like kind of curbed it, but then weed kind of stopped working for that now. So, um, I guess the older I get, the more like responsibilities and things like that, that I have, they, they can flare up and I have, I have times where I feel better and I go, Oh, I'm healed. And then they'll come like hit me like in a few uh, do, months or whatever. Do they, like when the when you go to the doctor for these, do they say that it's one of those things where it truly is like in your head where you have the control to like zen out, or is it like a diagnosed thing where? Yeah, well, like, they diagnosed me like in the four, like fourth grade, fourth fifth grade with like pat, like um, anxiety disorder and okay. like clinical depression and all that. I don't think I'm really depressed. I think I'm more like just anxious. Can you talk yourself out of a panic attack? Like, oh, what, it's like hard, what, like dude. what, like run me through like what happens in a panic attack? Because I think s- I've maybe only had one in my entire life. Have yeah. you ever had any, Tony? Crippling, crippling. Same. Had to treat myself. Had to figure out how to do it. Yeah. Starting stand-up comedy helped a lot, but I used to have horrible panic attacks. Same thing. Wanted to go to the hospital, but see, my mom had them a lot. Yeah. So it was one of those like teen wolf moments gotcha. where you're like, oh my god, this thing's happening, and your mom's huh. like, no, here's what's happening. Oh, that must be. That must have been cool. Yeah. Yeah. We priceless. Know what the fuck. And we also have a we have a direct line because you know one of the best things you could do is talk to someone that knows what having a panic attack is like when yeah. it's happening. And uh, so like I always had a direct line when I was um, when I was going to school and this and that like. She still says like, "Hey, my cell phone's always on. If you ever need, you know, if you ever need sure. me in the middle of the night, whatever." Um, uh, so yeah, I, I've had it crippling, crippling, crippling. The worst types of panic Ugh, attacks. Yeah, I've me had. too. It's Ones awful. especially where I didn't even realize it was a panic attack, and 
your brain just takes over and you're convinced that you're just having a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, it's that, awful, dude. You forget that you have panic attacks. Like, it doesn't click in your brain. Like, this could be a panic attack. You're just like, oh, this is a heart attack. This yeah. is crazy. I'm going to die young. Well, that's what happens. You start, I start so with. Yeah, wa- walk walk me through, like, what happens, like, uh, the beginning stages and, like, what, like, leads into them. So, specifically, the right before the London trip, a few weeks before that, I was, I've, I've always had kind of, like, leg issues on my right leg. And that week, my, like, foot started getting hot. Like, it just started... I, what I think it is, it's, like, basically just, like, a carpal tunnel sort of thing for the leg. Because I always... That's, like, the leg I skate with. That's how I play drums. I think it's just, you know, hip stuff, whatever, from using my leg a lot. But I had, like, convinced myself that, like, something deeper was wrong and I started to freak out about my foot being hot and then I was like oh I'm going to like another country I'm gonna like so I don't want to I don't want that to something to happen out there and then I was like what if I like whatever and then so what happens is it starts as this small thing and you just start to spiral thinking and then you start to panic about panicking you go like I don't want to panic on the plane or in London I don't want to have to go to the hospital in London whatever and uh so yeah you kind of like do this inception thing where you just start you start to spiral then you start you start looking at like everything in your life and then you start to regret and you have guilt and then uh, it just your body starts to attack you and so I have to go so that day I had to go and um they give me like they'll give me like Ativan, so that it's kind of like a Valium or whatever whatever those things are so that'll just in the moment will kind of chill you out enough to where you can get your thoughts in order and I was able to like go home I like packed everything was like fine and then what I didn't realize now is like these tours are the cure for it like you you start to panic about the tour but once you're on it it's great and like you you know uh yeah it's oh, like yeah I'm well, I think the lead up like us the 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 prep work and like you know the 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 going and and waiting to get on flights or or whatever and the, like the the, the commute between like airport and all that stuff that that feels like the work part and then yeah. everything else is the reward for oh yeah. you're there we get to do the show we get to hang out with friends for we get sure. to do it's it together best. yeah that's that yeah that's like the reward for everything yeah so then I so I go but then even now it's like I don't the like the Ativan and stuff like that it's cool but it also just makes me even like more I go well this is just temporary once it's gone I'm gonna be right back to the scary part is when you think like it's never gonna end and you're never gonna get out of it and you're like this is just me now yeah you have to like believe that you you have been okay before and that you will be okay in the future um but yeah I don't know for a little while I was exercising a lot and that that definitely helps a lot eating good sleep um, I, and you know, they're always telling me like, this is just a temporary thing. You need to find like a long-term sort of solution. So I've been like, I don't have health insurance right now, but I'm like figuring out like therapists and stuff like that. I think like I want to maintain it cause I really do love life and like all of this. And I, I just want to live one where I don't feel like I'm freaking out about everything and everything and anything, you know, it could be anything, man. But, um, I don't know. This shit is great. All this, this stuff has really helped because it's given me sort of purpose and direction and to be with friends and have a great time is like really, really important for quality of life. Yeah, well, like I was saying, I think that I think it helps a lot. Uh, I, I mean, they were they were so I went like seven, eight years without even having anything like one. Yeah. Uh, once I started stand up comedy. Um, which is crazy because I was having them very regularly before that. How old were you? Like the f- the first one you remember? First one I remember uh, was um, I was probably fourteen or oh. fifteen. It was the first time my mom was always at home when I was a kid because she had a degenerative <laughs> spinal uh, column. Oh, I thought you were going to say something about being a degenerate for a second. That's why I laughed. I wasn't yeah, laughing at the she spinal had a column. <laughs> Degenerate bastard for a son. Anyway, I yeah. thought you were gonna mention like a stepdad or something, a degenerative <laughs> yeah. Yeah. being that was always there and never was leaving. And anyway, she had a yeah. broken spinal cord, Jeez. so she was around a lot when I was a kid. And uh, and then um, and then when I was in high school, I had just started smoking pot, and my aunt from Florida came to visit and my aunt and her went to do something one evening and I'm like okay well this is cool Uh, I'm gonna take a hit of pot uh, for the first time by myself so it was my first time smoking pot at home 
and smoking pot by myself. Oh no. And um, the way me and my buddies did it back then is you just crush a soda can, right? Put yep, some holes yep. in it and fucking take a whack. Well, I'm smoking out of my bedroom window. I'm the king of the world. I take a hit. I'm like, fuck it. I'll just finish this bowl. I don't want to waste it. So I smoke a bowl to the face, like four or five hits more. And then uh, it started, man. I just started pacing around and I'm uh, like, oh, I don't feel so good. I think I'm having a heart attack. And I, I just felt like if I kept walking um, around the apartment that, uh, that like it would keep up with my heart. I felt like I was whoa. keeping my heart beating from walking. Damn. Um, and this lasted for hours. I must have walked fucking miles in oh my, my own apartment. And... Um, my mom came home and I'm literally like, I fucked up. She's like, what? I'm like, I fucked up. Dude, bad. dude. Yeah. She's I've like, what are there, you talking dude. about? I'm like, I smoked pot by myself and now I feel horrible. I saw, you know, I had uh, this vision where I saw my little baby nephew like in the bathroom mirror and I told her about that and she's like, holy shit. Yeah. You got that from weed? I got it from having a vicious panic attack. Yeah, it wasn't the, from weed. It the was, chemicals uh, in your brain yeah. are pumping. Everything happens when a real panic attack happens. It's not like whoa. It's not like you. You can. I, I didn't. I would. I guess I wasn't aware that some of the symptoms of a bad panic attack is like you can hallucinate and, and like see I like crazy s- things. Yes. Yes. That you're freaking out. I mean, it's a complete. You're your brain there's a complete disconnect so you, there's no more rational thoughts yeah extreme yeah that's why like you know joel going to the hospital for it's crazy because that's like that's where i draw the line like it's like all right well i won't go to the hospital because i know it's a panic attack but then again that shows how extreme his case is because he still doesn't have that final shut off where it's like oh this is a panic attack that's right but it, that's how that goes to show you what it is is you don't even know it's a panic attack well, the, I, the, gl- big, the big ones you don't even know what the fuck's happening I'll, I'll go just for relief because like the last time I had it I was having them once every minute like they would I would lay down and then it would hit me again and I remember having like my air conditioning on and then turning my heater on and standing up like walking around and like um, and that's the scariest part sometimes is like you can see outside yourself and you're going like, dude, like, I you know what out. this is, yeah. but you can't stop it. And I, I remember like looking at myself in the mirror and like being like, wow, I look normal, but like I feel like I'm, you know, it's awful. Like in my head, it feels like a fucking turbine or something. Um, and I, I will go to the hospital for for some sort of relief like you know they'll give me something but um i think i just used up my last one of that but uh i have i have um i have two you use up your last one of of, of, of like what going because then no just because they'll be like well it looks like you were just here like whatever three months ago and like they had to we, do that for me with uh they 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 uh they stopped giving me uh, antibiotics um, because I kept running myself down from not sleeping enough and huh. just kind of overdoing it and they're like uh, you have come in here multiple times and we're not going to give you antibiotics anymore because you just need to sleep more Whoa. and I was like okay uh, so anytime I get sick like can get a sinus infection I literally just like oh I need to sleep more and I need way more water and yeah. just like yeah, it's mainly it just comes down to rest. I'm I'm the kind of person who, the really the only reason I usually get sick is because I run myself down from just yeah. going too hard. Exercise, food, and sleep are like probably the most important. Like, I just got to get back into a sort of exercise. Cycle. Is so important yeah. for anxiety and panic attacks. Yeah. It's like one of the most important things it's truly basically the one thing that everybody that has crippling panic attacks has in common is that they don't exercise so it's also there's also a lot of that yeah that a, even a walk can um a walk during the day like around the block is For enough sure. to get you another day yeah extension on um, yeah i need to get back into the cycle of that it definitely helps. If you're too tired, you can't really, it's just nice. You tire your brain out. Um, and I'll mention my mom uh, taught me a little trick uh, that works tremendously well that the doctors don't want you to know about if anybody's out there suffering from panic attacks or if you ever have one or if you ever with a friend that has one, you drink uh, clear carbonated beverages and you try to make yourself burp. Huh. 
Um, this releases gases in your chest, which are known to sometimes cause panic attacks, which send a signal to your brain that you're having a heart attack uh, when there's a lot of gas in your chest. Yeah. And the same signal that, so the brain tells your body that you're having a heart attack, so it sends more blood, it increases your heart rate, because that's what it does, is yeah, to yeah, try to save you from having reaction, a heart attack. Yeah. So that sends a signal back to your body, which speeds up your heart and all that. But it's just that you have a lot of gas built up in your chest. And people aren't thinking about that when they're having a panic attack. They're not like, oh, I wonder if I have to burp. Hmm. But if you train your brain enough to remember to burp, if you feel a panic attack coming on, it almost immediately releases... uh, You feel better 30 seconds later. You don't even really notice. Yeah. Um, but the clear carbonated beverages can help you get that first burp up. Like nine times out of 10, if I feel a panic attack coming on and I just do what I think's gonna be a little belch, yeah, it comes out like like that. Cause there's so much trapped up that that's what it is. And then your brain calms down hmm. cause the signal goes away. Yeah. Crazy fun fact. You could solve your problems with club soda, Sprite, yeah. ginger ale. It, you don't want it to be a darker soda because that makes it sink to the bottom or whatever. Like the sugars and syrups, heavy syrups, make it sink down so it's not as easy to do the type of burp that you need, I guess. Yeah. Stuff yeah, I have my- both of those sort of like the ones where I feel like I'm having a heart attack and then ones where I'm just running in circles in my head, like huh. just overthinking. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just whatever. I got to figure wild, it out. That's wild, man. And, uh, yeah, my mom. She's been she's been sick. I mean, since I was like a kid too. Like, uh, so I think a lot of that was me like worrying about her, and I would have to leave a lot of sleepovers as a kid, like in the middle of the night, because I thought my mom was gonna die or something, and then. Uh, Same. So it just starts, yeah, from being, like, young, and then people stop inviting you to fucking sleepovers, and then, and then that becomes a whole other thing. Were you... I was always the... the <laughs> I was always the guy who uh, wanted the the sleepovers to keep going, gotcha. like, as, as a... Even as a teenager, and people are like, no, that's weird. I'm like, what do you mean? I thought we were going to do a sleepover. They're like, dude, go home. I'm ah. like, but... I, <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> I like, I, I like, like. Uh, Can I camp out in your backyard? Yeah, like, like, is, are you still using that tent outside or no? <laughs> I like, I just wanted it. I don't know. I like traditions a lot. So yeah. when traditions end, it's always very sad to me. Like, one of my favorite holidays was always Halloween, and it Halloween it doesn't bum me out now, but it's just so different from it used to be because you like that cutoff year where I wasn't allowed to trick or treat anymore it just sucked yeah. I was just like man this is like this is what I associate with Halloween yeah it's like what else am I gonna do so Halloween's have like but also Halloween is just weird for me in general now because since we dress up so much yeah. throughout the week I usually don't dress up for Halloween me anymore either. I'm like I'm taking the night off everybody else can dress up yeah I mean you dress up a lot Think about it. How many characters in total you think we've done, Jeremiah? In total, well, j- dude, just on my Instagram stories, and I haven't even documented all the characters. Uh, I have over forty characters just in my Instagram story highlights, it's, and and that's not like those. Some of those are recurring, but some of those yeah. are one-offs. I would say we've done at this point, mm, probably around. Uh, at least between 80 and 100 at this point. Damn. Uh, some of them are one and doneers, and then some of them are recurring. Uh, people ask me and Joel all the time, like, what are our favorite characters? Do you have a few off the top of your head, Tony, that you're like, these are like, these are my go-tos. Like, when they come out, I'm excited right come away. On. I'm, the, I, I'm the one that told you about Feminist Stacy. I feel like I was like, Jeremiah, you don't even know. That is the future. Like, it's so far ahead of its time. I went off. I, I went off for you. On, I went off on you for like 20 minutes about how brilliant. I remember you sort of being like, like you knew it was funny, but I remember you sort of being like, really, you really think so? Because like, there's just nothing else like that. Like, and especially now in 2019, where it's like, fucking, let's go. Like, it's such a taboo, hilarious thing that I think even feminists could laugh about. Like, it's so yeah. far ahead of every other character that it's sort of its own thing. But yeah, I mean, I, I love all the characters and I love that it's always different and I think you just rotate them perfectly and it's just absolutely perfect. One of the most perfect things is uh, 
That feminist Stacy really took off on the monster. And I remember seeing you like on an airplane with the wig or something. I think that <laughs> well, was like I I traveled. Uh, we were going to from different city to different city. Uh, on the Monster Energy Drink tour a couple years ago. It wasn't even for Kill Tony. It wasn't even for Kill Tony. I was just messing with Tony on the flight. I was sitting next to him and I put on the Feminist <laughs> Stacy wig and I started being so loud and obnoxious on the flight that Tony was, starts dying laughing. He's like, dude, you're going to get us kicked off this flight. You need to chill out. And I'm like, oh, it's because I'm a woman? Really? You want to silence me? Guess what? I'm a woman. I can't be silenced. And Tony's like, Jeremiah, please lower your voice. Yeah, like, I'm not. Or at least wait till the plane takes off like he had he had decided to start doing this while we're taxiing to the runway or uh, we're set, pretty sure actually we were still connected to the fucking uh, jetway but the thing with with me though is is i kept the wig on the entire flight and slept in the feminist stacy wig so tony got videos of me like That's with my mouth open yeah. like and asleep and I was just like, oh, no, I already started the flight as Feminist Stacy. I have to finish the flight as You're her as well. insane. <laughs> I, I love it. Do you have any concerns, Tony, about us doing the amount of Kill Tonys that we're doing? Because I, I looked, I scoped it out with Joel, and in one month, we're doing like around 30 Kill Tonys <laughs> in one month if you look at how many there are. Yeah. Uh... No, not concerned. I think you know it's just the uh, people are gonna get more than what they're used to, and they'll then they'll get used to that, and then they'll it'll make them want it even more. You know, Rogan does it probably about thirty episodes a month, so you know usually they get less from us. Usually they only get one a week, so it's just a different time. And yeah. uh, I think that uh, one of the interesting things is my theory is that people will listen to those episodes of Kill Tony on the road and realize how much more fun the road episodes are than even the LA episodes, which are already notoriously fun. And the more people realize how great the road episodes are, the better the road, ep- the better the road episodes are going to draw. And the whole thing, I think, just feeds into itself is my theory. But I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm the- either, I'm either uh, Steve Jobs or. Uh, of uh of live podcasts or I'm the fire festival guy. We're gonna we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> no, wait. No, I think we've it. already proven that we're not the fire festival. I well, mean. the the road shows for me, like those are definitely some of the most fun shows because there's a different kind of energy that gets brought out and a different level of excitement. Like on home turf, people are excited and you know they're sometimes coming from different cities to see us at the world famous comedy store or countries or countries. Yeah, that happens a lot. I'll be on the front patio after the show and they're like. I came from Scotland to be here. Oh, yeah. thank you. I'm just like, what? Hell yeah. And I'm like, ju- like, like, oh, you were just like gonna be in town or something? You're like, no, I came. I, I planned the trip just around Kill Tony. I'm like, what? Yes. This is insane, dude. Yeah. Well, that guy thought it was Kilt Tony. Hey. I've used that joke eight times. Every time. Every time it kilts. <laughs> yeah. That joke. Kilts. I'm not even gonna skirt around that subject. Wow. Skirt. Dude. Skirt, skirt. Skirt, skirt. Yeah, Joel and I've been having to prep uh, pretty hard for these upcoming runs because uh, they, you know, a lot of these shows are back to back to back, and we have some very fun characters that I'm uh, excited to bring back and also to introduce to you and you know the Kill Tony audience along the way so I think it's going to be a and pretty epic tour there was a costume warehouse closing down in North Hollywood and me and Jeremiah well Jeremiah went and then I went yesterday everything must go dude so we got yeah some and some of this stuff was from movie sets and TV sets so I don't want to give anything away but we have in the pipeline for some of the road shows and, and at the comedy store coming up we've got some uh, pretty legit costumes uh that we were able to get, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped. We might need a checked bag. Oh, <laughs> you know, remember Red Band's giant purple thing that he brought to yeah. the UK? So like one of those for the both of us could work. Oh, that'd be cool. Where that's actually. just the one thing we check. Yes. <laughs> if you guys want to lug around a massive bag with you. Well, I mean, not that big. Anyway, uh, never mind. I I guess... uh, Tony always makes fun of us. Well, all right, me. For how much I pack. Yes. Yes, like today, for example. (laughs) And every day. We can't even see out the rear view. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, you can actually look in the back, and you can barely see out, out the back because that's just Jeremiah's stuff. Our stuff's on top of the <laughs> roof. <laughs> You're like an Indian train. I tell Tony, he goes, how are you, how is there this much stuff in that suitcase? And I'm like, I'm bringing multiple people with me, Tony. Yeah. There's multiple people who are living inside that luggage. And also, obviously, Jeremiah wears like pajamas to sleep in with like fucking brings his own pillow and sleeping hat and gloves and winter coats in a bag for some reason. <laughs> Oh man, I have I have my own negligee that I wear <laughs> when I go to bed. Like, ooh, that was a that was a great show tonight. I'm gonna reward myself with some vanilla coke in the I'm champagne slip glass. Slip into something more comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Joel is two feet away from me. Do you, ever, do you know what? Uh, do you know what uh, black people call negligee? <laughs> what? Don't do it. Negligee. Same thing. You bigot asshole. Uh, I thought they called it a motherfucking negligee. Hey, what up? Negligee. <laughs> Was it negligee in uh, 98, 98 degrees? degrees. <laughs> negligee. Uh, I love that book. Uh, I've shared a bed with you, Jeremiah, when we went to San Francisco. Hey, that. There's a, uh, yeah. there's a uh, what do they call it? A mirage. A mirage? Yeah, over there. You see that fake lake? Well, it's not a lake? Nope. No way. I don't know what if is people it? can see it or not. It's a fucking shadow of that mountain. Oh. Hmm. The shadow of your Interesting. mountain. Interesting. The shadow of your mountain. Oh, the when you're of your mountain on a California drive to the the shadow of the mountain of the California Phoenix driving wild on the road. Yeah. Johnny Cash could get away with anything. Johnny Cash and Frank Sinatra basically could just say or do anything and they'd be fine. You know what? It's, it's uh, kind of crazy. I think uh, uh, Johnny Cash is actually going to debut a new song here on Jeremiah Wonders. Right now? Right now. Wow. Go ahead. Oh, wait. I got, the, I got the instrumental coming up. There's always advertising on oh this. Oh, my goodness. Those 15-second ads. Well, I got to have a tank of gas on my way to Phoenix. Mountains on my left and my right. If I don't make it soon to Phoenix, I'm going to have to pull over for the night. Well, 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 rocks to my left and rocks to my right. It's a long drive to Phoenix. Got to make it before night. And everything in front of me is what? I call my sight and I'm going to get into a fight. Yes, I'm going to get into a fight. Hey. Wow, I can't believe we had Johnny Cash just appear on Jeremiah Wonders. That was amazing. Wow. <laughs> and then you got Frank Sinatra. You got Frank Sinatra. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah let me get that. Basically, you know, Frank Sinatra, another guy with his, you know, prowess basically didn't really have to try at all like he was just such a consummate performer hey hey so a beautiful day here in phoenix this one goes out to all the people that are out there driving hey you know me and my uh if i could just say he would always talk a lot like in his live performances yeah absolutely all right, so this one goes out to all the beautiful women and men that are driving the Phoenix. Hey, it's a long drive to Phoenix, and it's hot outside. If you want to go for this type of ride, it's Mockins in the middle of the road. So stay in your lane, you toad. That's right, trucks on the right. And everybody's gonna have a good night. Just keep rhyming night with right, and everything's fine. We have Tony Clifton, <laughs> Frank Sinatra ah. in the house. Wait, Tony Clifton's actually calling into the show right now. Wow. Um, it's a bunch <laughs> truck here. Me, we're having fun. We got bushes and cacti, and we got a little mirage out there. I'm gonna drink some water of the sands. Delicious, sandy, rocky. Desert water. 
start spreading the sand. Yeah. Start spreading your legs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, if you have gay sex on the way from California to Phoenix, it's not gay. So I see a little bit. Anyway, huh? <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> what? what Tony Clifton? I uh, I didn't know that you uh you felt that way about uh, gay sex. Uh, only when I'm in the desert. It's the only time you're still straight. Hey, it's a little uh, it's a little jam about the drug on Phoenix. Huh? Rolling through blights with my wife. She's the best lady in the world. She loves being with me. She's six foot three, and she needs space for her legs. <laughs> yeah. She's always got to pee. She's always in need of more space. She fills her water bottle up at the water fountain. At every airport, so he doesn't have to buy any more when you land. Cause bottles are six dollars a pop. The water keeps her alive. <laughs> she fills up at the airport even when we arrive. <laughs> <laughs> gonna fade out nice little soft gonna fade slowly out slowly fade out <laughs> oh no we got a special guest here in the studio yeah, we do. just showed up you know what guys oh, sax talk. it wouldn't be a jeremiah <laughs> wonders without sax talk wow oh my god and uh this is this is gonna happen i'm going to uh assemble joel take over for a second i'm gonna joel talk i'm gonna let a blast of fresh air into this car. sure let that fucking blast of fresh air right now um this is uh i'm still impressed that jeremiah got this uh sent to him we, we he put it out into the universe um that he wanted a what is this a soprano a curved soprano sax yeah a curved soprano sax is that because there is a straight soprano set like that's probably what kenny g plays um but a couple months back jeremiah started talking about we saw this funny ass picture of a tiny saxophone and jeremiah was like i need to have that daddy wants that and daddy got that and now he's got it and it's beautiful it's got mother of pearl inlays on the buttons and i don't know if you can see it on the camera he's wetting the reed right here it's very wow. sexual wow. it's a pretty disgusting ins instrument if you think about it yeah. the sex a lot of spit involved yeah. um it's freaking sexy dude a lot of saliva right yeah, I uh, I forget what it was. I got I went at the ninety nine cent store, uh, in Glendale, and they always have these weird like Armenian R and B CDs and stuff like that, or Russian, uh, Russian rap groups. And uh, I got Jeremiah a CD called like Saxy Tunes or something like that. And uh, from what I heard, he's been fucking to it. For the last three months It's been great uh, I've been playing it in my car exclusively Because that's where my CD player's at But it's been pretty wow. fun Wow So people do still have CD players in their cars That's funny uh, You know much to, the, much to the disbelief of Tony Hinchcliffe and Brian Redband CD players still exist I don't know if you've seen Jeremiah's car But it's, uh, it's already pretty CD Pretty CD <laughs> Oh man <laughs> Bumps in it than uh, than uh, Ice Cube's face. Yeah. <laughs> or Morgan Freeman. You know they got those bumps. Yeah, ice Cube. <laughs> they all have. They have those like moles around their eyes. No, ice Cube does. He's got a couple. He has like two. Jesus. But I don't know why I brought him up. I'd love to meet him someday, and I don't want him to ever see this. If he was out in this desert, he'd melt. Ice Cube. <laughs> he'd melt. He'd have a melt on Ice Cube. Like the Wicked wow. Witch. Wow. Like a witch, like a ditch, like a snitch. Snitch is getting snitches. Got 99% of snitching once. You remember when, when uh, Tony f saw Pitch Perfect for the first time? <laughs> Dude, 
I'm telling you, it wasn't. First of all, it wasn't Pitch Perfect. It was Pitch, it was pitch Perfect, perfect 2, Two. Okay. Which okay. I will never watch Pitch Perfect One. All right. Because as a diehard Pitch Perfect Two guy, I'm convinced it doesn't get any better than that. Wow. John Lithgow is the one that sells it for me. Sorry, he wasn't in one, right? Jer- Jeremiah is my Pitch Perfect uh, chief I, I, correspondent. I, I, Give me okay. a G if. Uh, oh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> When you hear that sound, you know what it means. It's time for Sax Talk. Yeah, baby. Uh, Sax Talk. (laughs) Well, I've I've been married for almost two years now, and uh, a lot of people have been wondering, what's married sex like? Tony, you know, it's different. You used to be a playboy and you used to sleep with girls on the road and now you're married. Now you have a beautiful wife and uh, what's that like? Well, let's just say yesterday I had sex. Yes, and uh, you know, my wife and I are very close. We spend a lot of time together, so it's not as uh, it's not as kinky as it used to be. So yesterday, uh, I literally was laying in bed still. My wife was uh, she had a jump on the day. She was running around. She actually made me a uh, kale smoothie with a bunch of uh, proteins and nutrients in it. And then as soon as I'm done with the smoothie, what does she bring in? A double shot of espresso. And I don't know whether it was the smoothie or the espresso, but I got hard as a rock. And I don't know if you guys know this, but on May 25th, live from Las Vegas, Nevada, Caesars Palace pay-per-view, I'm going to be roasting Ric Flair, which is a big deal to me. The reason why I bring that up is because the past week, uh, my apartment's basically been a large war room in which a lot of Ric Flair clips and things like that have been on, and uh, so Ric Flair's been a running theme in my apartment for about a week. Everything about him. So, I asked my wife while she was in the other room when I got this fucking bony. I go, hey, uh, Charlotte, you want to, uh, you want to je- go for a ride on uh, Space Mountain? Which is what Ric Flair used to call his dick. And then I hear the sound, ooh, and little foot pitter patter, and she came in and, uh, you know what I mean? She fucking uh, started uh, wetting the reed. And by reed, I mean my penis. And uh, and then there's always a point where instead of uh, instead of coming, I literally go, hey, bend over. And I fucked her. Put her. Yes. Uh, and then I uh, moved it back and forth inside her vagina. And fucking motions. And then. Yep, a lot of that. And then I uh, pulled it out, came on her back. I went and grabbed a towel, wiped her back off. She said, thank you. And I said, damn right. Got to clean up all this mess I made. And then I, uh, and then I spit on her face. And No, I'm kidding. We didn't do that. Uh, and then that was it. All right, Joel, your turn. Talk about the Disneyland. No. No. Yeah, do it, dude. Two, no, I'm not doing you went it. Two condoms, bro. Let's talk about it. Oh my god. No. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Come on. I just talked about my fucking wife. You're shy about this chick that might move to No, else. no, no. All right. That's enough out of you. 
Um, Come on, what are you shy about? It's our real lives. That's true, but I, but I, Jeremiah, but I, what are your thoughts? Do you think you should talk about it? Absolutely. Uh, uh, here's the thing: this person didn't didn't sign off on this. Oh come on, we don't know who this person is. It could literally That's be true. anybody. That's true. We're not gonna say her name. Um. Um. Okay. All right. Oh boy. Um, oh, she's a boy. No. Yeah. 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 So this me and this man. Uh. No. 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 This. Uh. This nice lady. Um. Had a nice date. Yeah. And, where'd you go? Uh, uh, we went to, uh, so, th- so it's funny. We we're just talking about panic attacks and you guys are literally sending me into <laughs> one right now. Shut up. <laughs> Look how close this car is tailgating this, uh, RV. Just kidding guys. It's connected to it. I wish a rock would fall on this car right now. Uh. I'm trying to think if there's a, something else that I would, uh, rather talk about uh. An- like a different story. You have any good sacks? Of your uh, sexual yeah. history. Uh, uh, okay, I got one. This is in high school. Oh. Um, so my my fr- a friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine, uh, he had his own apartment at like seventeen. His his uh, uncle owned this restaurant, and so he lived above the restaurant. And so I used to like we would go there for like hanky panky and stuff because we knew we could bring like um, girls there and stuff like that. Uh, not that I did it all the time, but so my girlfriend. So my girlfriend at the time, uh, I take her there. Um, he wasn't home, so we couldn't go into the apartment. But he had a shed uh, outside of the apartment, like a wooden shed. And uh, so we went into the wooden shed, um, and uh, we started. You know, things were getting uh, very sexual. Um, and so we're, we were doing it. Uh, it was nice. Uh, I don't think at that age I was uh, probably going very long. And uh, so we finish up and I realized that somebody had locked the shed while we were in there. And so we were trapped in the shed. And uh, I started to freak out because I was like, how are we going to get out of here? And uh, I kind of like pressed on the door and I realized like it was just uh, somebody didn't they didn't lock it, but they had put the lock through the hole and it was like, what do they call it? Like a mimic? I don't know what they call it. Something. A dummy lock. A dummy lock. Yeah. So they had dummy locked it. But the hole in the door was like really small. And so uh, I had to like shove my arm through the crack in the doors. And it was super painful, and uh, but I ended up just scraping my arm through the thing, getting the dummy lock, getting us out of there, and uh, saving the day. That's right, and I was fucking in high school. There you go, another episode of Sax Talk. Well, guys, this has been a weird, fun, experimental episode of Jeremiah Wonders on the Road, headed to Phoenix and Vegas with Tony Hinchcliffe and Joel Jimenez at the very beginning of our summer tour for Kill Tony. Uh, Do you guys want to uh, plug anything upcoming? Uh, To quote William Montgomery, I'm freaking out right now. We have a lot of uh, upcoming Kill Tony shows. Uh, We're heading to Phoenix right now, but uh, we got Vegas on Saturday almost sold out. Uh, And then it really starts next week. Salt Lake City, Spokane, Washington, Boise, uh, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver. Uh, And uh, it goes on and on. Lawrence, Kansas, Omaha, Nebraska, uh, Iowa, Des Moines, Chicago, New York City, Poughkeepsie, and so many other great places. Check it all out. TonyHinchcliffe.com, DeathSquad.tv. Subscribe, rate, review on YouTube. And uh, there you go. So, yeah, it's going to be good. If you're a pro wrestling fan, check out the Store Horseman. I don't ever mention that enough. If you're at all into pro wrestling, I have my own wrestling podcast with my pals. So check that out. There you go. 
Heck yeah, check that out, Joel. You you good? Mostly sorry on social media. Check him out. Uh, Joel will also be playing drums on uh, at the album release party slash show for Reagan and Watkins on June 6th. And uh, we might get an uh, appearance from our pal Tony Hinchcliffe and uh, Red Band and some other buddies as well. So definitely get tickets to that at the Comedy Store. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this special edition of Jeremiah Wonders on the road with Tony Hinchcliffe and Joel Jimenez. Love you guys. Eat.